All right, I'm doing some battery protection circuitry testing right now. And uh, I've got uh, some of these lithium polymer batteries that are gonna be part of mom's timer that I want to make sure that they, they don't die, they don't go down to zero volts uh, in case they haven't been recharged for a long time. And I found that if uh, you do get these down to zero volts, then the charger that I'm gonna be using, um, which is that little guy back there, uh, microchip makes a, uh, makes a little inexpensive battery charger. Uh, it can't recharge the uh, battery when it's at zero volts. I think you just can't see it, so you can't recharge it. Um, the battery protection uh, uh, circuitry is supposed to protect against that, and if it gets below 2.4 volts, um, it kicks in and it uh, disconnects the battery from the circuit, and um, and it's all good. And then when you plug the USB cable back in, it will charge things back up. And so um, uh, all this mess here is just the battery protection IC uh, mounted there, and there's two resistors for the capacitor, and then that's the uh, microchip battery charger, which I've shown in um, my other videos. And then right now, I've got the uh, Freetronics uh, Cube 4 running on the, this little dinky battery, and it's drawing uh, 25 milliamps from it, and the battery is down to about 2.9 volts. And if I, if I uh, plug the charger uh, in, then it jumps back up. Uh, we're, we're, putting, we're putting 16, 14 milliamps in, and the battery is being charged at 3.9 volts. So the, uh, the battery charger is working okay, and um, I'm just going to make sure that when this battery voltage gets down to 2.4 volts that uh, this protection IC kicks in. And my initial testing, when I wasn't using a lithium polymer battery, I was using my little power supply, uh, said that it was drawing about 1.9 microamps when the battery protector kicked in. And, um, I'm just going to make sure that that uh, this does the same thing with the real battery, and that recharging works okay. So it's supposed to uh, the battery protection is supposed to turn off once the battery voltage gets up to three volts. So I'm just going to make sure that 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 seems to work okay. So the uh, the battery protector um, uh, circuit was a, a little difficult for me to to uh, to work out. Um, the first thing I did when, when I was looking online was I found a picture of one, but I couldn't quite make out what the chips were that were on it. And so I ended up ordering some, and the little, um, little SOT23 device that's sitting right there uh, happens to be called a DW01P. And then these chips next to it are in-channel MOSFETs. I could make out these in the pictures online, but I couldn't make out the little tiny chip. So it's a DW01P, and I was able to find them on eBay. I, I purchased a few, and I also just got a few of the uh, in-channel MOSFETs. Um, but I couldn't, couldn't find the DW01P on DigiKey or Mouser. But it does turn out um, that there's a, there's a manufacturer on semiconductor that make um, an equivalent one, this NCP802, it has the exact same pinout and function as the DW01P, and it um, it just controls the MOSFET to turn power on and off to the circuit. But when I was doing the searching for uh, uh, for all this, I found this other one that's called a DW01M, and what's neat about it is it has a built-in MOSFET. And it's, you know, it's real small. They make a couple different packages. Um, they have the SOT23 package and they also have this, um, this TSOP8. But in the SOT23 package, um, I think it's, uh, it can dissipate like a half a watt uh, through this little dinky package. And that's, that's overkill for what, what I'm gonna be using for mom's timer. So this little guy is really all I need. But the rub is I can't find a uh, supplier for this. DigiKey and Mouser and Element 14 don't have this and I can't find an equivalent one. So I used a, a tried out a new service uh, for me I haven't used it before called Alibaba. 
and if you put the part number in that you can get from the data sheet, um, there was um, one of the entries here, um, SZ Golden Sunshine Electronics, uh, that I submitted a, a bid request for, and I, I put in a request for 110 of them, and he quoted me at uh, 10 cents a piece, and he gave me two different shipping options, one which was a DHL, which was like $35 for it, and basically gives it a week, or um, just using the normal China Post, and it would take, you know, maybe a month to get it. So um, I, I submitted a bid request to this person and, and another one. The other one was 40 cents a piece for each one, so I just, just gave this guy a try. His name was Rock Yang, and um, it worked just fine. And I got a, I got a hundred, he actually sent me more than 110, I got like 120 something here. And um, yeah, it, it, it seemed to work okay, they take PayPal, and um, it was okay. So, unfortunately you just can't find a US supplier for these things, but these are almost perfect. Um, if only they had a, a battery charger built into them, that would be even better, but uh, besides that, I think these are going to be great, and I, I think I can use them for other battery-powered projects, which I seem to always be doing, so uh, that's why I got a bunch of them. So the uh, the hookup, um, this, this isn't really accurate, but basic schematic. I've got my battery here, and then the DW01 with the in-channel MOSFET is sort of hooked up like this, and then the battery charger, and uh, then the, the USB uh, lines and so what happens is your positive voltage comes through from the battery charger and gets through the rest of the circuit and it's the negative line that the in-channel MOSFET cuts on and off for the rest of the circuitry and um, so yeah that's that's how I've got all this hooked up right now and it seems to be uh, working just fine all right the uh, battery got cut off and it's only drawing uh, two microamps, and this little cheap uh, meter reads the same as this other fairly cheap meter. Um, so, uh, and that's and this is what the data sheet says it's supposed to draw as well. So it seems to be working okay. It cut the power off, and if I go and plug it back in to charge it, then uh, the charger came, light came out, and the power started going over to the the cube four again, and now we've got 16 milliamps going into it. All right, I've got my uh, DW01P all hooked up uh, while I'm testing the charging through the DW01 DW01M, and um, I've got uh, one of the in-channel MOSFETs here and the DW01P over there. And basically, I've just recreated the circuit that's on these, except there's only, I'm mean, only using one. And um, I've got my LED plugged in to be my power draw, and it's, uh, it's using 5 milliamps. And what I'm going to try now is turning down the voltage to simulate the uh, lithium polymer battery being drained. And... Uh, around 2.4 volts, the LED should turn off and it should be go into the battery protection mode. This voltage, uh, this voltmeter that's on this little power supply isn't really accurate, but uh, okay, there we go. Gives me the ballpark. So it's off now and let's see what it's consuming. The DW01M did about 1.9 microamps uh, when it was in the battery protection mode and this one is 1.3 or yeah looks like 1.3 microamps so this setup is actually quite a bit better maybe 40 or 50 percent better um, than the DW01M so using the discrete uh, a discrete MOSFET seems to be a little bit more efficient I still think you know 1.9 microamps the DW01M does is going to be good enough for, for the mom's timer, but um, kind of interesting. This one's a little bit a little bit better. All right, the charging just completed a little while ago, and it brought it up to 4.15 volts. So it looks like this uh, little DW01M 
uh, circuit is going to be really nice. It's going to work out, I think. It's going to be a perfect uh, battery protection circuit for your mom's timer project. I'll just put two of them in it and um, on my own custom circuit boards. And it just takes a few parts, two resistors and a capacitor, and it'll be great. I love how the, it integrates um, one of these controller chips and in-channel MOSFET chips into one little little part. And as far as the um, specifications for this go again, you know, I was really looking at it and thinking how many milliamps I would be able to pass through it. Um, and it says here that it has a, in the SOT23 package, it's got a power dissipation rating of 0.5 watts. And at uh, four volts, you know, which is kind of a typical voltage I'll be running at, that's good for 125 milliamps. And that'll be plenty. So if you've got a really low power project and you just want to have a nice integrated circuit, this DW01M is a great way to protect the battery, I think. Um, the, the, other, um, the other one that uses the separate DW01P and the in-channel MOSFETs, uh, just one of the in-channel MOSFETs on its own, it has a total uh, power dissipation of 1.5 watts. Uh, all the other specs are exactly the same, interestingly enough. The 20 volt drain source voltage, uh, 6 amp continuous, that's the exact same as the DW01. Uh, drain source voltage is 20 and 6 amps continuous at 25 degrees Celsius at least. Uh, but it, the only thing that's different is the power dissipation being 0.5 versus 1.5 watts. So, um, so yeah, I think that's why they have two of them on these circuit boards. Is you, if you put them in parallel, then you, you could do three watts through these little circuit boards. So, anyways, uh, I really like this DW01M, and um, I think I'm going to be using it for my timer.